An Introduction to Microperimetry with Dr. Felix Sabatez and Gary Gallimore, produced at the Vision Research Center of Kansas City. In 1980, biomedical engineer and physicist Dr. Oleg Pomerantsev, a lifelong friend and co-worker of Dr. Charles Scapins, invented the scanning laser ophthalmoscope with the assistance of Rob Webb. The design of the SLO, including acousto-optic modulation and the addition of a computer with graphics imaging capabilities, created an instrument capable of psychophysical testing in the form of manual stimulus presentation directly onto the retina, thus the birth of microperimetry. SLO microperimetry changed the functional evaluation of macular diseases. For the first time, retinal sensitivity could be matched to retinal structure, and fixation location and stability could be established. This instrument was never widely used due to hardware reliability problems, software that was not user-friendly, and cost. It was only used in a few centers, and it is no longer commercially available. There are currently two commercial microperimeters available. The NIDAC MP1 combines digital fundus photography with computerized perimetry. The OPCO instrument uses a scanning laser ophthalmoscope to combine spectral domain optical coherence tomography with microperimetry. The OPCO instrument employs automated examination with eye tracking. The pattern is registered to a high resolution SLO infrared image and the pattern can also be registered to a topographic OCT image. A microperimeter tests retinal sensitivity using a threshold strategy in a manner that is similar to standard automated perimetry. Eye tracking during the examination eliminates fixation stability as an error factor in visual field testing. With the OPCO instrument, the sensitivity map can be registered precisely to a fundus image or to an OCT thickness map. This is a retinal sensitivity map produced by the OPCO instrument. The final retinal sensitivity score is usually determined by a threshold strategy. The range of sensitivity is depicted by a decibel scale from 0 decibels to 20 decibels. 0 decibels represents the brightest stimulus presented, so a score of 0 would indicate that the patient did not see the brightest stimulus and thus has relatively poor sensitivity. Conversely, a response to the 20 decibel stimulus indicates that the eye has seen the dimmest stimulus and therefore the retina has excellent sensitivity at that point. The retinal map is registered to an infrared scanning laser image of the retina. Each spot tested is marked with the retinal sensitivity decibel result. An average score is also produced. Testing points with a zero score indicate areas of absolute scotoma for that particular stimulus size. The stimulus size can be varied from Goldman 1 to Goldman 5. Each test also produces a fixation scatter plot. Each time a stimulus is presented, a mark is made on the plot. A tight central pattern is a sign of relatively good visual function. The plot will also show you the locus of fixation on the retina, as pointed out by the left-hand arrow. The sensitivity map can also be viewed or printed with a color-keyed diopter value overlay. This is useful for assessing the significance of the map at a glance. The hot colors represent relatively low sensitivity, and the cool colors represent relatively high sensitivity. This 82-year-old white female had been diagnosed at another office with AMD. Upon examination, her diagnosis was changed to ocular histosplasmosis syndrome. This is her fundus image six months previously, showing a quiet histoscar near the fovea. Today, she has no specific visual complaint, but her vision has dropped one line from 2040, six months ago, to 2050 today. On ophthalmoscopy, the scar appears to be unchanged. Microperimetry is performed using the OPCO instrument. Notice that there is significantly more red on the October map as compared to the March visit, indicating a decrease in retinal sensitivity. Also notice that the fixation map is more scattered, indicating a decrease in visual function.
A spectral domain OCT was performed with the same OPCO instrument for comparison to a scan performed six months ago. Notice that the appearance of the scar has changed little. It is difficult to differentiate between an active membrane and scar tissue with an OCT scan. Our clue to activity is the new appearance of cystic edema above the lesion. Although an active subretinal membrane is not always accompanied by cystic edema. A fluorescein angiogram was performed for confirmation of lesion activity. There is increased fluorescence in the late stage angiogram compared to the early stage image. There is also increased fluorescence of the lesion in today's late stage image compared to the late stage image of an angiogram obtained six months earlier. Although there was no visual complaint, the re test results were explained to the patient and an avastin injection was scheduled.